Okay, so now we did our door opening, and now we're going to just do our standard layout. On a standard layout for your typical home, uh, apartment complex, uh, any type of residential setting, commercial setting, structural members such as studs are placed 16 inches on center. Floor joists, 16 inches on center or less. Uh, roof rafters, 16 inches on center. So what I'm going to do here is lay out this wall 16 inches on center. Starting at the end of my wall, and it doesn't matter which way I go, okay? On this particular wall, it doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is my first layout is going to fall at 15 and a quarter. So I'm going to mark 15 and a quarter. And then I'm going to pull my tape back. And I'm going to use my speed square to mark where that stud's going to go. Now remember, I was holding my tape measure and I was pulling from my right to my left. So at, when I mark this, my stud falls on the left side of it not on the right. I'm pulling, I'm taking the tape measure, and I'm physically pulling to my left, which means each mark I make, the stud falls on the left side of that mark. So now, I've marked my 15 and a quarter on my first stud, or my first layout, and now what I'm going to do is take my tape measure and hook it over my first layout, and I'm going to lay it out here on top and lock it in. And what I'm going to do is go along my wall here, and I'm going to mark 16 inches on center. And as I mark this, I'm going to put an X on the side to where my stud's going to fall. So if I mark 16 here, I'm pulling to my left, my stud falls on the left. I go to 32. Mark 32. I'm pulling to my left, my stud falls on my left. 48, same thing. Mark 48, stud's going to fall on the left side because I'm pulling to my left. 64, and the last one is at the very end of the wall. I'm going to need a stud here anyway, so I'll just mark an inch and a half from the very end of the wall. When I do my layout, or when I use my speed square to mark my layout, it, again, it's already an inch and a half, so I'm just going to place it on the edge, mark the inch and a half, and finish this. And this is in a doorway, so I'm going to mark these two O. Because it's in a doorway. Typically, I don't need a stud in a doorway. I need my opening. But just in case, I need a cripple above the door. So then I'll come over here and mark this one again. And that's going to be an O, because it's in the doorway, but it may have to be above the doorway. Or above, actually, the header, because the header is going to be sitting in the doorway. Then I come back over here. Now I'm outside of my doorway. I'm on a tip your standard layout. So these become X's. A standard layout is an X. I marked X here as well. Standard layout, 16 inches on center. And then I'm going to put my studs on the end. I always have to have a, in, a stud at the end of every wall. And now that I'm properly laid out, I can count up how many full length studs I need for this particular wall. One, two, three on the king, four on the other king, five, six studs. I know how many studs I need now. So here I'm going to give you guys a chart for rough openings, for window rough openings, and also for headers. And I'll explain those in a second. But we'll start off with the rough openings. Here if I have a door that is two feet zero inches, so that means just two feet, which is 24 inches. My door size is actually 24 inches then. I need to add two inches to my rough opening, so my rough opening becomes 24 plus two for a total of 26 inches in the clear. For a window, a window rough opening, you always need the rough opening to be larger than the actual piece you're putting in, whether that be a window or a door. So if my window width was 2 feet 0 inches and the height was 3 feet 0 inches, I'm going to add 1 inch to my width and my height. So now my rough opening becomes 25 by 37. And now for headers, 
Anytime you have an opening in a wall for a door or a window, you have to put a structural member above that opening to carry the weight from the ceiling joist, from the roof. So we have to put a structural member on a header properly assembled would be a 2x10. Two 2x10s ten. Two, two nailed together and put above that opening to protect that opening. For example, if I have a door size that is 2 feet 0 inches, I add that, to, I put that in inches and that's 24 inches. My rough opening has to be larger than my actual door size. So I need to add 2 inches to that rough opening. Therefore, I'm at 26 after I add my 2 inches for my rough opening. I also have to put a header above that. And I have to have structural members, jack studs, to hold that header up in place. Each jack stud is an inch and a half thick, therefore one and a half times two equals three. So what I've got here, I've got my standard door size, which is 2.0, converts to 24 inches, plus three inches for two jack studs, plus two inches for my rough opening. So my header length will be 29 inches.